camera. This conference will now be recorded. Oh. Do you have a camera on yours? Okay, I'll send you the one. I'll send you a Nova 35 cam and you can try it on the 24 where you document it and make sure that it works. Okay. All right, cool. We got now I just need to find somebody with a, a Nova 51. Yeah, my audio is acting up, so I'm just kind of listening right now. Okay. I was going right. to. I, uh, oh, you're good on the on the 35. I forgot that camera that 4K W95 is the right one for the 35, and it is Mac compatible. Yeah, that's what you said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. We wouldn't have sent you one anyway. <laughs> we already know it works. <laughs> so. Um. No, I, I I know that like in a few calls, like people have said that like you know the I think it was the the one where you had the Lightburn guys on. That like there's maybe some features that aren't like the same with the Mac version or whatever, but I guess I'll I'll see how it goes on on the Mac version, and if I really need to, I'll set up like a a well, dual boot with Windows or something. As far as Lightburn goes, everything that you can do in Windows, you can do in Mac. Oh, I don't okay. think there's a lot of difference there. Um, one difference is the uh, you, if you go USB, you don't have a selection between packet and serial. It's only serial. And mm -hmm. one of our one of our fixes for that sequencing issue with the dual air assist was to run uh, packet USB instead of serial. You won't have that choice on a Mac. Um, if you go Ethernet, it should fix it. Yeah. If you go Ethernet via a Thunder, you know that Thunder port or Lightning adapter, USB, whatever. Is it still thinks it's USB and you still get a sequencing issue. Wait, really? So, yeah. If so it's, it's, the best way it's, is option number three, which is just use send or shift send. And then you you don't ever have that problem. What is it? You Instead of hitting start and streaming the job, if you oh. use send and send it to the controller or shift send where it sends it to the controller and then starts the laser automatically, yeah. it'll, uh, it'll eliminate any of those uh, dual air assist sequencing issues permanently. Gotcha. That seems to be the permanent fix. So, what can you can you describe the the issue that that fix solves? What what is the the dual like yeah. assist problem? I've got. I might as well pull it up here. Let's see. So, what happens is is if you have everything selected correctly in Lightburn, you know, for your high stage and your low stage, yep. sometimes they get reversed. Sometimes high will come on when low is supposed to, and low will come on when high is supposed to. It and has something to do with the USB communications. Okay. Uh, and to, we, to clarify, is is the low stage just supposed to be like the while you're sitting there, kind of throttling, like before you start a job, and then the high kicks in when you start a job, or? No, the low stage is whatever flow you set if you're engraving. the The only reason this whole setup is here is a lot of people want to engrave and then cut, and they don't want to have to do it in two different processes. On oh. a laser that just has one air volume, let's say that that material you're using, if you use a lot of air, it makes yeah. your engraving look bad. So what you okay. have to do is turn your air down, engrave, and then yeah. when you go to cut it, turn your air up, and then do the cut. Well, this way it does it automatically. You'll switch from low Got for it. the engraving part and then switch over to high for the cut part automatically. Got it. That's cool. And sometimes I, they get backwards. The laser, the laser I use on the makerspace doesn't have uh, two stage, so it's just like one speed for the... Air right. assist. I, yeah. I wasn't familiar with that uh that workflow. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a cool thing. So cool. it's like Robert's popping over here. So um you know I, right, I, I wrote, I'm back. what's that? I said I think I'm back. I had some reverb in my thing. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I don't no, you, you sound good. All right, I mean, cool. I hear myself a little bit. Uh, well I so hope I you hear yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I hear feeding back in in his audio, but not bad. It's not not bad. Um, right. But yeah, what we found is that a uh, haze uh, can be deposited on the optics from the salty air, you know, stuff like that. Um, just I don't know why. So they may come uh, looking tarnished. Uh, so this article is to tell everybody to check their optics before they run. Actually, that one's not. Oh, is this like because they are originally in China and it's like on the coast? I, I guess. Um, we've been having them come in, some of them with a haze on them. They're tarnished. The mirrors and optics have a haze on them. And we think it may be the salt air, even though they're in crates, even though they're in sealed containers, yeah. 
you know, they're sitting on a ship, you know, sure. and sitting at the dock and stuff. So we're thinking that's what it is. So we're just going to encourage everybody. And I thought I had it in here uh, in big red letters. Oh, yeah, right here. Uh, I've got it in the first one also that you need to clean it often like in that I'm going to show you this too Robert um what was that article I just looked at the first steps so Robert I put this little thing together of some of the articles that we have you know for people where it's in one two three four where they can actually look it through it um you know like looking at the manual first thing there's some safety stuff uh, and then that's what happens if you don't clean your lens. I think I've got one. Yeah, you must clean your optics prior to test firing your machine for the first time. And then that goes to Robert. That goes to your, you know, knowledge base with your uh, video in it. And then some stuff about the dual stage air, because if you don't understand that, you're going to fail your optics. Um, you know, and then head crashes, the autofocus in, because that autofocus is a little weird to some people. Uh, and just that kind of basic stuff. And I'm going to expand on a little bit, but I think this will be helpful because these are some of that kind of like an FAQ, some of the, the quick tips, like putting in your um, uh, offset adjustments and that kind of thing, you know, to make sure that everybody puts that stuff in and updating your preview uh, and uploading the library. So I see, uh, I see uh, one of the items on your list there is uh, ventilation and I have an update since I've been like stressing about ventilation. <laughs> and that is, I find, what's that? You've been hyperventilating. Uh, <laughs> uh, I finally bit the bullet and cut a hole in my roof of the garage and installed one of these like gooseneck um, okay. vents. And then um, I'm going to have like, like, I think I mentioned last time, like five foot, five feet of the pipe in the attic space then yeah, come the down below. yeah yep rigid duct it's uh okay. the rigid aluminum or whatever um you have a damper? yep it has a damper um however <laughs> i'll come back to that in a sec um and then then i'm gonna have the ac infinity like in the room like mm -hmm. not in the attic space so i can easily service it or whatever if i need to um and then i'll just have it go straight down to the laser but the laser. I'll probably have a couple. I'll probably have a couple uh, um, blast gates on there, like you mentioned in your article, um, because uh, just last night, like I just saw it. I think Wednesday, and then last night it was like really windy outside, so I like went out there to like see if it was rattling around and shit. And sorry, I swear, I, was like, I forgot it's recording. <laughs> um, like the wind when it would blow, it like kind of lift up the dampener a little bit, and like. So um, I'm definitely going to install maybe maybe like two blast gates or so like before you get to the laser. And hopefully, like, I'll, I'll definitely leave the lid open too, like you suggested, like yeah. in the winter. Well, if you put a yeah. blast gate on it, you shouldn't need to. Well, not, no. None of that's well, going to get just putting, Why don't you just put an electronic uh, flapper in there so you don't have to worry about it manual. As soon as you turn on the laser, it sends a signal to open up the... All you need is a 12 volt signal off the laser to, to, or, tell, to power it open. Get a spring loaded yeah. backflow preventer. That'll do the same thing. It'll block it coming one direction, but when the fan kicks on, it'll open it up. I was thinking like maybe a, a lower tech solution, but I, I'm I'm open to looking into those things too. But like I feel like the oh. the 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 the, 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 the one is low tech. It, it's not motorized. It's just spring loaded. Oh, well, the gotcha. thing with the spring loaded, loaded is, is like, the damper the damper lid is like super lightweight so i'm like maybe it just needs like a quarter or something like glued on is top it, of it so is it weighted it, or spring loaded Some uh it's weighted. it's just gravity okay. so like it's just yeah, a piece of it. you can throw it just get some uh get some old wheel weights or something and stick them to it yeah yeah, uh, yeah I'd start, I'd, what i would do is i would start out with obviously the machine off put a weight on there, just tape it to it or something, have your wife or whoever turn on the, the fan and make sure that it, it opens up and fully. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just keep adding adding enough weight to where when the fan's blowing, it's opened up fully, but then it has enough weight to slam it shut when it's when it's not yep. blowing. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, probably the approach I'm going to take. I, I did like a, like a motorized like gate solution or whatever, but like, I don't know. I then I have to like get electronics up 
there and stuff, and it's like, eh. Well, no, see, you, you run you run some t- uh, eighteen gauge or twenty gauge wire up to it from from the motor down to the laser and tie it into the uh, I don't know, t- tie it into the LED, not the LEDs, because you <laughs> that power supply, as I, I found out, is not very strong. Um, the power is what the uh, the say the LED power supply on the back of the machine. I upgraded what mine. The, I upgraded mine. Light? Yeah, I upgraded mine to to power all the LEDs that I have in mind. But cool. Um, but if you get something like that, you can actually tie into that. Yeah. And then that way, as soon as you turn power on to the laser, the valve will open. It'll stay open until you turn the power off to the laser, and that way you don't have to worry about it. Because the problem yeah. with the spring loaded ones is with all that soot and debris and everything getting blown out of there, the, the spring gets coated with sure. that, gets that, that yeah. and tar and stuff. It gets sticky. It'll hang up yeah. and, and everything. Whereas I, the mechanical one, you can get the guillotine where it just slides in and out, which would probably be the sure. best because it stays out of the flow of the exhaust completely. Or yeah. you can get the, the mechanical butterfly, which it just pivots a valve open or closed yeah. inside inside the duct. Sure. That yeah, the I'll probably look into like higher tech solutions if I want to go that route like next spring cuz uh we had our probably last nice day of the season on Wednesday and now it's I just me cold. And... Extra weight on the damper's the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, that's that's definitely seems like, <laughs> it definitely seems like the lower tech way is sometimes like <laughs> better but I I'm, I I do like to tinker as much as like you know, I'm buying a, a, a I'm going to be buying a thunder laser, so I don't need to tinker and, and futz with it. Um, it is sometimes fun to like do unnecessarily high tech solutions for things. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I got that installed, so um, now I'm I'm ready like day one when I when I place my order. Sweet, sweet. Hey, John, how's it going? Oh, go ahead. Take care of business. It's good. Going good. <laughs> I, but, Brian, I thought you said we were going to celebrate that Ron had ordered his machine. <laughs> well, we're, we're celebrating the fact that I figured I finally made a decision on the ventilation, and I installed one of these, like, gooseneck vents on my garage. And yeah, he's, he's won the battle, but not the war. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah is that a, is that a I'm, I'm, probably, I'm, probably, I'm probably one of the only people who's, like, cut a hole in the roof before they got their laser like <laughs> in hand. is that what size what size vent is that it's a six inch yep hey girl my dog just came downstairs come here girl she's a um, so, this is the ah cool <laughs> her name is Winnie and she's spoiled yeah, I totally get that. <laughs> totally. Um, so, have you have you looked? Let's see, Robert. Have you 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 were digging into that data a little bit? I think um, on the power. Did I send? I think I sent you that. Yeah, you you sent it to me, Brian. To be honest with you, I haven't looked at it much. I haven't done a lot. But I'm going to pop it up here just so we can have something to talk about until somebody has a question. Um, We started looking. I just started looking, not because there was necessarily a problem. I just wanted to know. uh, I created a file. What this is for is to collect data. If somebody's having a power problem, we can send them this article and they can test fire their laser at different percentages um, and then record the values of the current uh, during those pulses. And to make it easier, I made a file. Um, that uses a bunch of strange things to make it happen. Um, Jason at Lightburn gave me some suggestions on how to make the file um, so that it'll pulse and pause, pulse, pause, you know, and go through it so they can sit behind the back of the machine with a notepad and just write down the the values as they pop up. Um, But what I found is when you um, pulse from the panel, you get a little bit different value than you do uh, when you do it from the program. And we verified the program, and it's right. So here's the here, here's how the kind of difference goes. And I think part of it has to do with the cap, because we're capped at 70%. So that's right. going to play into effect here. 
So when you run from a file, um, that's what you're going to see if you try to go above 70%. It's basically going to plateau and flatten out a little bit. Now, this is on my, my particular power supply. And this has nothing to do with laser power either because your laser tube does not emit a linear output anyway. It's got a power curve just like this power supply does. But I've been collecting some data. This is what um, – I don't know if I have the stuff I said that I was going to have. It. I might not have it on here yet. Some data that China gave me. And all of the stuff that I've come through actually looks correct. There's nothing wrong. So I didn't, you know, I wanted to just bring that out and let people know this wasn't to look for a particular problem. I just noticed an anomaly when I was making this article and I expanded on it. So that's what, if you like going into rabbit holes, here's one. And <laughs> so you can check those out. Um, but anyway, that's some of the stuff I've been working on. That file's at the bottom. It, it, it's kind of neat. I use lead-in um, to uh, make the pauses and everything. The, the actual line that I draw has a zero power. So it's actually the lead-in. I'll give you an example. Is that like the same thing we were talking about that we could do if we wanted to wait for like an AC Infinity fan to turn on like a zero power line yeah. to like be the first thing that fires? Cool. Yeah, you could do you could do a lead in on your. It'd have to be a cut. You'd have to start with a cut, I think. But you okay. could do a lead in. Like for instance, here's what I did. This is a 10 second pause. I've got it at one millimeter per second. Uh, oh wait, no, that's just a pause. The next one actually has. That's so they can get ready after they run. So I made us a, a, a pause time for the cut through uh, of 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds. And if you'll notice, my line actually has about a zero power. It won't fire. So what it's going to do is burn the laser at 10% power for five seconds and then do my line. And that's my pause. So I get, what? you know, approximately five seconds of a pause. So why? Huh? Oh, sorry. I, uh, why? Uh, so you said this is a zero power, but I'm seeing power 10% and then min well, power zero, one, max one. power but I don't fire until I get to 7% or something. So, you know, as okay. long as I'm below the threshold there, it doesn't matter. It won't output. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so basically the way this works is you've got this one line up here, and I stretched this after I did it, so it probably won't be exactly 10 seconds, but approximately 8 to 10, mm -hmm. something like that. So you'll get a well, – as soon as you start the job, you'll get a pause for about 8 seconds, and then it'll do this one um, – It'll it'll do the lead in so it'll burn for five seconds and then pause for approximately five seconds and then do the next one twenty percent for five seconds pause for five seconds that way there's a cadence to it and when you're writing it down it'll be easy because it'll be there's a number it went away there's the next number it went away and all you got to do is jot them down then then we can you know get that data so that was the purpose of the file so one person could collect data without having a second person or figuring out a way to see their meter while they try to work the panel plus doing it manually is a little bit more involved so now on the 24s brian is there an led lead uh 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 readout on the on the power supply or do you have to look at the uh, the milliamp gauge this is our current 60 watt power supply and it does not have the digital gauge so it'll have an analog in the back okay yeah. Or digital in the back, but I'm pretty sure they're analog if they're okay. not built into the supply. Is yep. yours analog? Yours is, isn't it? Mine's analog, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think all the 24s will be analog. Yeah, yeah. Or the 60 watt, 30. the 40 and 60 watt, and then I think uh, 80 and up has the MYJG supplies in them that had the digital display. Gotcha. Cool. I'm going to definitely run this test on mine because it appears to me that I mine doesn't fire at all till about 14 percent. So yeah. And, and I do have, I don't know if I'm supposed to share them or not, um, but I do have um, some data on what China collected and it is, you know, it, it jives with what I came up with, but they also have um, the power, the actual power, laser power levels, oh. you know, where they've been collecting that data and they've got a, a good average. So, you know, I could, I could somewhat get kind of close if you said, if I'm pulsing at 20%, what's my power? my actual caloric power of the tube and i could get yeah, you what's probably coming out. within a couple of watts 
you know, so I've got some of that data too. Of course, it doesn't do any good to have those numbers if you can't measure it on your end, you right. know, with a caloric yeah. meter. So I don't know how valuable that information is without being able to back it, you know, to compare it. But, uh, but I do, we, they collect all of this stuff and they constantly look at it. That's one thing that I love about the way they do their stuff. They're constantly looking at this stuff and innovating and every machine that goes out the door, they record the power levels, they record the million, all of this data. Um, yeah. Even, even the reverse compensation settings, they retain those. So they keep all of that data on every machine. So they have a lot of data to go on. And I, that's one reason that makes them so awesome is this they know the answer to everything because they've been collecting data for right. what yeah they got a years. real good uh, foundation for what a machine should do yeah exactly so and these aren't guys just updating parts they designed this thing and their engineers built it you know what i mean so i mean yeah. ground up uh, i'm yeah i'm i'm really you know my whole experience with thunder so far both ways you know as a as an end user and being with them has just opened my eyes to so many great things. Gotcha. So that important yeah. first steps, Brian, that's uh that's how it's uh, listed. I can search it by that. It is. Yeah. Uh, first, yeah, important yep, first perfect. step. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if y'all have any suggestions, now this is something else I don't know if people know. You know, if you find it helpful, we like to know it. But if you don't, it'll ask you uh, why and let you explain. Oh, and good. If somebody doesn't like something that's on there. Something needs to be corrected. Please let me know. We re we rely on that kind of feedback, you know, sure. to be able to make sure that our stuff is good. So don't be shy. Use the use the like or the unlike if you need to, because I definitely don't want to have something out there that's not congruent to what we're doing. So, and it's starting to take hold. You know, more and more people are hitting the support portal. And, you know, I'm up to 110 articles now. It was 90 last week. So I'm, you know, trying to add a couple a week at, at, at a minimum. And I try to post them. And they're ugly when you post them because it doesn't show the picture when you show them, share them to Facebook. Right. But, you know, it's function over form as far as this data goes. So Do you, uh, is this is this your service desk software you're talking about? Yeah. I, I'm surprised it doesn't have. I'm a web developer, so like I know like how to get the image to share like in a, in a normal web page. Right. Uh, so I'm curious like if there's some setting. Well, like, like if you see instance, anything about like Open Graph or. No, it does not have. It does not pull the Open Graph meta. It's not uh -huh. even embedded. Um, well, let's see. Let me see. What's in that like SEO up uh, search engine optimization tab? Yeah, all it is is a description and a long tail keyword or or just oh, or a title. Gotcha. So, and you have to manually enter it. It won't parse it from the article. Hmm. And uh, oh, there's an image. It says it's pulling everything but the app ID, which okay. of course they're not going to have that. So it's pulling, but it doesn't show up. I can I, and I always go to the debugger first and debug it and yeah. make it scrape it so I can see yeah. what it looks like, but it never outputs that way. Weird. Huh. So, but hmm. you know, all you see is this, and if the picture's missing, usually there's a greater than sign there. Uh, I don't know, but like again, you know, the information's there. It doesn't have a pretty yeah. picture with it, but anyway, um, let me turn that off. So, Robert, how you been doing, man? Good. Uh, summer orders are really ramping up this last week, so things are going well. Awesome. How about you, John? You making cool stuff? I'm trying, and Robert helped me out the other day to get me straight with this origin nonsense. We, we, you know, but uh, I think we got it, so it's working real good. But I do have, I do have a question, and maybe you can give me a one-minute answer. I don't want to. Type. Can you explain to me the different Team Buddy and four-inch lens and high-definition lens? What the heck is the difference with all of them? So the lens that comes with the machine is a stock two inch lens, two inch meaning that the focal distance is from the bottom of the, the lens to the material is 50.8 millimeters or two inches. So that's equated in our nozzle to six inches from the nozzle that, could, you know, just because that's how the way it works out. The four inch lens um, has a four inch 
focal distance. So the material is going to be farther away. Your beam is going to be approximately double the size that it is now, which means your beam density is going to be cut in half. You're distributing that wattage across an area that's twice as big now. So there's a little bit of trade-off there. What it's good for is cutting thicker materials over 10 millimeter because you can focus down into the material deeper than you can with the two inch lens. Right. Um, you know, you can, you can get on the two inch lens, you can focus up to five millimeters in the surface of an object. So if you're doing something 10 millimeters, you could still cut it with the two inch lens focus dead center and you'd have a millimeter gap between the nozzle and the material. And that'll be fine. You get more air assist that way, you know, for cutting, that would be, you know, optimal. But if it's over 10 millimeters, you don't have any more play there because you can't have the head touching the material. Right. And the focal, the distance between the nozzle and the material, the, the focal point on that one is 10 millimeters. So technically you can go nine millimeters deep into a material and still have your head off the material by one millimeter. Right. I got that. So okay. That's really what the four inches for is to make your thicker cuts better because you can focus deeper. It makes them a little bit straighter, not quite as much taper. Right. Um, and, and, and like that, but that's typically what that's for. Now, and then you, you also have a high definition lens. What is that? What's the difference? That does the opposite. That that makes the beam half the size or more of the of the two inch lens. So you, you have a very, 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 very tiny, tiny beam, and all of that beam density is concentrated right there. So it's more powerful, but it's just for engraving. So mm -hmm. the power really doesn't matter that much. It's for getting above resolutions above 500. So okay. It's basically like using a fine point pen instead okay, of a sharpie. sharpie. <laughs> well, the four inch would be a sharpie. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the 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 HR lens, the beam buddy is that is the high res head. That so we that's use. what the beam buddy is. Yes, same okay. thing. Our our unit, our US high resolution head is a beam buddy head. Okay. Um, right, yeah, I, that I sure what you're you looking for at the beginning sort of, before I started talking. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you did a video the other day um, where you were uh, talking about cleaning or something, and you had one of those beam buddy heads there, and I was mm -hmm. hoping you'd go into it a little bit more, because I didn't, I didn't know what that was. I've heard other people use it, and I didn't know what the advantages, disadvantages yeah. uh, uh -huh. that was. Let's look up. Let me see. Brian, based on what you're what you're saying with the four inch lens, like you can focus like nine millimeters into the material um, and still have a millimeter clearance. Is that to say, based on your two inch example, that you can cut things like up to eighteen millimeters? Um, well, on the um, on the two inch head, you've got a six millimeter gap, so the farthest you can get away is one millimeter from the surface which means you'll be five millimeters into the material. So the maximum depth you can get as far as focus goes, you know, penetrate into the material on the two inch is five millimeters. So you could do a 10 millimeter object and still get halfway through yep. with the focal point. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, is that same logic carried to the four inch lens? Like if you can focus nine millimeters in? Yes, you can focus nine millimeters in, so you could do a piece of 18 or 20 okay. millimeters. Yeah, okay. yeah, you're right. Cool. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, the Beam Buddy is, yeah, that's just a video. I thought I had some other stuff about it. But um, the head we used to sell, there's actually an article about that you might want to look at since you're looking at the heads. Um, and I think it had something to do with dot size. Yeah, here's the dot test. And um, that's that's actually between the standard two-inch head and the Beam Buddy. And they look at it under an electron microscope at, in China and actually look at it. But here's the original uh, test results that they used or that they uh, formulated. I just took the other head out because, um, let me close this, because I don't, we don't sell it. So here's the, here's the uh, standard versus the HR. Now this is the the Thunder Laser HR head, not the Beam Buddy. The TLHR is the older one. And this is the Beam Buddy compared to it. So it compares both in here. And when you get to the details, there's the dot. It does all three. The two inch, here's the, here's the comparison. Here's your dot sizes. 
So on the standard head, your average is 16.72 microns. Is your now this is dot size, not spot size. And there's a difference there because if you did this on anodized aluminum, which they may have done that on, I'm not sure what their substrate was, um, you'll get a finer dot than if you did it in a piece of pine, for instance. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay, so it's sure. not the actual laser spot size. It's just the the dot, the smallest dot that it can create in the material they were using. Okay. So, and, and you how can see that for, how big was that dot? The standard head, the best dot size they could get was 16.72 microns. Dang, that's tiny. Yeah, and with the HR head, they got 14.9, and the the our our beam buddy that did 13.65. So, and they looked at they looked at how the air affected the two different lenses and how the stuff. I mean, see, they when they test them, they really go through it all. Right. You know about you know how debris sticks to it you know and how they perform that way so they've got some neat information in here i'm taking uh avid notes because like it's, i'm probably going to care about this in the future uh sure. did, did, did it say uh um did you say the dot size for the four inch ones too like how i know you said it was like basically the, flexing, right the four inch one is not in here but Thunder laser heads. This is on the Chinese side. I'll, I'll make an article about this. I might have this one. It's the comparison of the different heads. And there is your dot size. And I think they mean spot size. Like the actual beam size here. Are you sharing your screen? Yeah. Hey, we're not getting anything. We're really? Getting anything. Yeah. Hey, you're blowing in the breeze because you ain't. <laughs> I don't know where the button went. Probably at the bottom where it says screen. Yeah, I found it. <laughs> he said reluctantly. I don't yeah. want to publish this one, but I have to. I screwed that one before last up. Um, can you see it now? Yep. Okay, now sorry. Can, yeah. All right, the standard laser head is showing oh, okay. 0.099 millimeters. That's the laser that, size. That graphic is perfect. I love that. Yeah, there you go. I'm I'm taking a screenshot. <laughs> oh, you mean to move? You mean to? Oh, you're good. You're good. I got a screenshot of it. So there's the four inch head. There's the standard head, and this is the the global HR laser head, the the high resolution head that China sells. We're I think we're the only ones, the only distributorship that's doing the Beam Buddy. But let me go back to that other thing real quick since you didn't see it. Um, you guys so you are the only ones doing a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Oh dang. So this is the Chinese uh, results from the test. Um, this is the standard two inch lens versus their HR head. And this is the global HR head to the beam buddy, to the one that we sell. And then they've got the electron microscope results. There we go. Now, hmm. when I talk about 16.72 microns, you might know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, that, that's the difference between the standard head. I need to fix that. Oh, wait. No, that's in theirs. Uh, HR head and the U.S. head. And these are in microns, so you'll have to convert that to millimeters. But, again, these are not the laser spot size. It's the actual dot size of whatever, you know, they were laying out on this material. Yeah. So, which ultimately is what matters. It doesn't matter how big yeah. the beam is. It's how it's going to come out, how you want it, you know, to come out on the material that you want. Yeah. There's what I was talking about where they compare you know, the, the, they get dirty quick. All of them do just because they're so close to, you know, to the, to sure. the material. Um, yeah, I, just did, I just did like a six hour photo. I, the one that, I shared on, on the site. Yeah. That thing looked good. Did you use the, that, that was a 16, that was a 16 by 16 by 50 or 18 by 15 inch um, picture. It was done with a two inch lens um, at about, I think it was just over 300 DPI. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it came out really good. And see, a lot of people think, gosh, you got to have 600 DPI or 800 DPI. And even if your image is that, that's not always good for the laser. We're talking more like, like he says, two, 300, you know, yeah. on, on stuff like that. But the biggest, honestly, the biggest thing is people want to understand. And luckily the people that I had, I did the photo for, 
is you can't use a 25 kilobyte file or megabyte file for for doing a picture you know yeah. you gotta have you gotta have something substantial a couple thousand uh kilobytes or or what have you for for a decent photo of any size because otherwise it's just gonna be grainy and blurry and it's gonna look like crap and it'll never work especially if you have to enlarge it if you have to enlarge it then it's even worse right mm-hmm. But so yeah, I try to I try to photos yeah. like a plague. Yeah, <laughs> no, that looked really good. I still haven't gotten my images down yet. I, well, I still... uh, Richard actually is the one that hooked me up on the the photo editing for it. Mm-hmm. That's something I don't do a whole lot of, and he hooked me there's up with that, that. There's that new site Imager that that guy made that does those gecko designs or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of like Photograph, but it's free. Um, there's a lot of people have, using. I have Photograph, but it's not. It's I've not. Got it, it, it's it's easier to it's easier to tune it and and do your own macros than it is to mess with Photograph half the time. Yeah, and and I want to learn it in Lightburn. I mean, if it can be done in there, I want to do it there. You know what I mean? Just so oh, I know the process. It, so. it can now if you look in your lower right screen. If you do a, a bitmap. You actually have color corrections and yeah. and all that stuff available now, which, which we didn't have before. When but, is that? Okay, I'm running a beta version. I don't know if it's in there or not. I have to look and see. Well, I I am kind of too. I think. Do you, does yours have the tool lines in it? The tool layers. It's got, yeah, it's got the layers. It's got uh, you can adjust your colors, your brightnesses, your contrast, your all that stuff in the bottom left left uh, corner of your light burn or bottom right corner sorry and shape properties oh yeah uh, returning visitor well it'll have all the it'll yeah it'll have all the other stuff cool uh well anybody got anything any more questions right. or- I forgot to mention when I installed that roof vent, I recorded the whole process. So uh, I'll put a video out on my YouTube channel when it's uh, when I'm closer to being done with when when I get my laser and hook it up to it too. But okay, cool. Yeah, I, I got. What do you use for photo editing? I got to get into doing that because I usually do all my stuff live and it ends up rambling. Me? And, no, I me, use, well, anybody. Well, I use OBS Studios a lot OBS studio it's open source it's free but that's usually when I'm streaming or I'll use it because I can do multicam and switch between them and and add web pages and sound and all kinds of stuff and have it there and just switch through that's what well, I, I can use for main production I can do all that if, online, doing, but if you like mean I'm like right. non-linear video editing uh, I use Sony Vegas or Adobe um, Premiere like I mean I can do all that stuff you know, yeah. back and forth and do all that stuff. Similar to OBS. But, but what I'm OBS. saying is, is like, is like uh, Ron is talking about his YouTube channel. Cause I, I'm starting to, like with the RC stuff that I do and all the other stuff that I do. I'm going to start oh. doing more videos. Um, but I usually do it all, all live because I don't have anything to chop it and cut it and, and edit it. So I didn't right. know. If, if... There's an open source solution that's a non-lin- non-linear editor. I'll send you a link to it. I'll have to find yeah. it again. But it's very similar to Vegas or or uh, Premiere yeah. or yeah, uh, I, those. I, I I'm trying to remember what it was too that I uh, I I'd heard about like an open source one too because I know there's like, like light like, or something. It sounded like Lightburn, but it was well. I heard uh, Corel Corel has a, a graphics uh, suite or whatever video studios, yeah. um, but I don't I haven't messed with that. But he just brought it up, and I thought I'd ask. No, I, 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 uh, I stutter a lot when I'm like just going off the cuffs, or like I can't organize my thoughts until like I write them down. So like, I, I script all my videos, and then I like edit them in Premiere Pro. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't script anything, and that's my problem. I just go off the cuff, and I'll be like yeah. squirrel. <laughs> but. I am very thankful that I'm getting a little more comfortable on camera for like my intros and outros though, because like it would take me like 
30 minutes sometimes record like a like a two minute clip and a one minute clip like <laughs> yeah like so painful but now i can like kind of record them a lot faster yeah cool deal. oops trying to copy oh, hey, I, I gotta get going to get my kid so uh but i'll probably okay. be back I'll, i might be back before this is over but if yeah if you could send me a link to that stuff i'd appreciate it i'm gonna give whatever i gotta try and um try to do more stitching instead of instead of a lot of live stuff because it I know it's boring for people to watch 30, 40 minutes of just rambling, but gotcha. at any rate, all right, you guys have a good one. And uh, yeah. later. Catch later. Blender. I never would have used, uh, I've well, tried Blender. Blender is for 3D modeling. Does it, it doesn't yeah. do video editing too, does it? Um, uh, it doesn't look like, no. It's just for VFX and modeling. Yeah, and I think that's an SEO article. Uh, <laughs> I like how you uh, know what you're looking at. You're like, no, this is garbage. This is just for us yet. <laughs> it's called light something. I saw an article on Reddit the other day that like listed a bunch of like free open source software depending on the category you need, but I don't think that's safe. I have it's good. I've tried that, but man, it's ridiculously expensive. And what I don't is? use Premiere Pro very often. Um, not Mac. Right. I use. I use Sony Vegas. That's mine, or DaVinci for color grading. Uh, if I shoot in RAW, um, Lightworks. That's it. Lightworks. Lightworks. That's a good hmm. one. Yes. I don't know if I'm familiar with that one. I don't think I saved that comment. Yeah, it's either. similar. It's similar to all the others. It's a uh, nonlinear editor. So. Cool. That's a decent one. Um, yeah, they, they all do like the same thing. It's just depending on which one you're familiar with. Right, right. Hey. I'll see that to him in a little bit. So. I started using Premiere. I started using Premiere in like in high school because we had uh, a class that taught us how to use it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I've just been using that forever, so it's hard to like get out of that habit. Yeah, I used it at first, and then I got into Vegas, and man, I love Sony Vegas so much. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, it, it, it doesn't play as well with After Effects as Premiere does, um, but it does. There's a few. I don't, parts. I don't like the, like they added that like a few years ago or something, like where they like talk to each other in real time or whatever. And I honestly don't like that most of the time. Like if I have a clip to do in After Effects, I'll render it separately and then like import it yeah. into Premiere. Cause, I'm starting to get used to that because now that I think about the workflow, it is neat because if you change it here, you're going to change yeah. it globally. Yeah, it was, it was, I found that it like, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just like you though. I make a set, like if I need to use the intro, I'll make 10 copies of it for 10 different videos if I need to, just because yeah. I'll just program that way, you know? Yeah, and it, but, the reason I don't like the like live connection between the two is like, I found I find that it takes longer to render that part of yeah. the premiere sequence then because like it's doing this like back and forth talk like every frame and it's just not as efficient, I guess. Yeah. So we have a we have a newcomer here. Let's newcomer. see if we can get some audio. Isn't it? She's muted down at the bottom. Yeah, let me see. There we go. Hey there, how are you? Ha <laughs> ha good, how are y'all? Doing well, doing well. We didn't mean to leave you out and just have <laughs> you hang in there in the balance. I'm just listening to everything. <laughs> So what, uh, what brings you to uh, Thunder TV today? <laughs> Learning and getting ahead of the curve. My 35 should be here mid-November. So absorbing <laughs> and just trying to get ahead of the curve. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, were, were you, did you see when I actually was able to share my screen and I wasn't talking about something that was imaginary, uh, that new <laughs> first steps? article that's in there you may want to check the knowledge base for that um okay. put that out and that's a pretty good article so i will definitely do that cool cool well do you have any questions so there. what about you robert do you have a question ask me a question yeah. I wish. <laughs> I got a question. I got a question. Okay. All right. We'll let Tom go. He raised his hand. 
Listen, <laughs> you have in one of your support videos, do you have one that gives step by step using a rotary for the first time? Yes. Because I'm going to try my rotary for the very first time. Okay. And, I do. And, and are, am I visible? Yep. You, you, will, yes. Ding, 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 ding. Let me get to the public view side. There's two. There's one for setup, and then there's a workflow. And there's also a manual. So okay. here's the setup, and here's the workflow. So that'll go over the, getting it all set up and the orientation in the machine and everything and connecting okay. it. Good. Uh, and then this setting, one, it, setting it up in Lightburn. Yeah, it'll show you how to set it up in Lightburn. And right. then this is an actual workflow where I get this graphic on there and place it and actually run the job. So you can actually see the workflow, how that goes. Okay. And if you hear me screaming from New York, uh, you'll know I, I didn't get it. <laughs> I didn't get it right. Well, I, I got you. But you can scream at me if you want, and I'll help you. Okay. So. <laughs> but I'll look, at the, I'll look at those articles before I start. And um, yeah, surprisingly, I wasn't sure because you know how I get long winded and sometimes I miss things. I wasn't sure how well those were going to do, but I have very few calls on setting up the rotary, relatively speaking. So I guess it's doing OK, but I'm always up for suggestions and improvements. So, you know, don't be shy like before. I, I, will, I will definitely not. No, I'm a New Yorker. We're not shy. <laughs> so. Well, I don't really have anything else, um, unless you guys want to just jaw about something. If you have a topic, feel free to to bring it up. I did get my uh, my Hero Seven to wirelessly stream to OBS. That's kind of nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so you're hang using OBS. I, I love it. Uh, when, once you get the hang of it and yeah. figure out all the sources. Yeah, that's the tricky part. And then, you know, same old thing. Um, I was overcomplicating things trying to get this thing to work. And I just went basically directly right from the camera to my phone to OBS and cut out the VLC and all of that. And it yeah. works great. So. Yeah. Awesome. The, the only thing I've found with mine, I've got five cameras, different angles I have set up. But with the cheap HDMI uh, uh, capture devices I have, I, you know, they go to USB. So there's a finite bandwidth there. If I hook up more than three cameras plus my light burn camera, it starts acting all twitchy. It won't work. Yeah. So I think I'm going to go to a slingshot or a look at Blackmagic's uh, solutions for wireless HDMI. Um, but I don't know if I want to do that because then I might as well go to, you know, 4K cameras all the way around. Right. And then if I do yeah, that. That's another rabbit hole that just you can spend as much as you want. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, I like the I like the the idea of the heroes and and just run them wirelessly. Well, you know, we got enough wires typically to deal with, so this is something that's been you know I've I've tried it on a couple of things. It seems to be pretty reliable. Uh -huh. um, there is about a uh, one second lag, but typically you're you're you know you're not going to know that anyway. Right. And and so yeah, so it seems yeah. to be and the, the the different field of views, you know, whether it's wide or normal you can pretty much cover whatever you need to when you're when you're trying to teach somebody so it's it's worked out well so if it's a lag between the audio and the video there is a slider in there in those settings right it yeah but it's not it's just a it's a total it's a total lag so right. they're all synced you just yeah. don't see them you know for about a second so oh, yeah. for, for most of that stuff it's not going to matter i got gotcha. you yeah that won't matter so well cool i want to see some more of that stuff too um well i guess that's oh no i'm i'm thinking i need to put that preventative maintenance checklist in there somewhere in that article in that first steps article i don't think the pm stuff is in there right i need to add that so well that's all i got i was just gonna hit a couple of those articles and and see if anybody had anything so we're we're close we're nine minutes away from the <laughs> from, from the whistle blowing so i think we made pretty good use um 
Kate, uh, do you have any other questions while you're on here? I'm sorry, how do you say your name? Khaki, like the color. Khaki, okay, awesome. Good. Do you have, I mean, uh, you're welcome to um, just have the floor, it, you know, uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions or anything you may have. So well, what are you no. planning on making? Do what? I said, what are you planning on making with your new laser? Anything and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, with those lasers, that's about the sky's the limit. So that's good. Yep. You know, we have mainly going to be the hubs thing. I've got the embroidery machines and the Roland printer. And so this is going to be kind of his project. So gotcha. the Roland, is that a die sub? It's a eco solvent. Okay. All right. So you, you can cut out a bunch of blanks and do puzzles and all kinds of neat stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Between that and the sublimation, I guess one right. thing I, is where does everybody try to find their board? Because, you know, I don't want to go to like Home Depot because there's a lot of fillers and stuff like that within the plies because I sell wood for my daytime job. So I know all about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've had some real good luck with, you know, some of the hardwood uh, stores or hardwood wholesalers carry kind of the better brand of birch ply i've had a lot better luck buying the five by five sheets of the birch ply from the hardware uh, hard wood dealers than i have going to the big box stores that's kind of a waste of time like you said the glue is just horrible yeah and most okay. time it's just like like underlayment materials it's like purposely meant yeah. for like subpar usage and so the Finish yeah, colors those, are nice either. Yeah, you even can get it off of uh, Amazon and you know in the 12 by 20 or bigger sheets that it's expensive to buy it pre-cut that way, but you can certainly yeah. get it that way. I purchased it that way before I started to cut stuff up and it and it's uh pretty reliable. There's very few sheets that I've had that have had a glue pocket, but you're paying a premium price for it. Mm -hmm. Of course. You gotta add somebody else's labor to it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Is this your first laser? This is the first laser, correct. Well, you started off on the right foot, no doubt about that. I've been researching them and talking to um, Grant and, oh God, what's the guy? He's working with Grant. Grant? Huh? Mm. What's up? Was it Clay? Clay, there you go. I knew it started the my mind went blank talking to yeah. him for about years and finally it's just pull the trigger gotcha see, what, what, see what john, john and robert john and robert are going to give me even more crap now because i've been on i've been coming to these webinars for a couple months now to like kind of <laughs> get comfortable with buying and you just you know pull the trigger you're like all right now 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 what <laughs> i keep coming back every week waiting for you to make that buy i it's got a bottle of like, champ i got a bottle is, of champagne over here we're gonna <laughs> I got I got a bottle of whiskey or something. Yeah. <laughs> Are you familiar with Lightburn at all, Khaki? We've been um, we've downloaded the trial version and stuff, so we've been playing with it, and we don't want to activate the 30 day or our 30 day ends next week. So Brett suggested we wait until we get the laser. That way we have you know the most updates. Uh -huh. Here. Yeah, take advantage of that that free month for sure. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, because in all honesty, when it, you know, before I bought my 24, I I had very little knowledge of lasers, and once I learned the ins and outs of the software, um, especially with the other machines you already have, you're going to pick up that laser process pretty quick. So you know, just work, uh, learn as much as you can on Lightburn, and it's a very capable software. You'll find that you can do just about anything once you kind of get to understand how it works who all uses corel a bunch of people there's even a macro in okay. lightburn to help you smooth out your workflow there do y'all set up the color palette with all your preset laser settings you, you can it does operate that way um but yeah that that is you can you can set up a one you can set that up in that instance of Lightburn, or you can use those values globally. I think, but um, do you mean will it automatically set the speed and 
and and power and all that stuff to each layer um correct like with um the rolling i can set like a fuchsia pink and when in corel i show the fuchsia pink as an outline and then when it transfers to the rolling software yeah. it knows that that's a cut line versus a prep line lightburn will look at different colors and group them together as different layers um depending on what the color is it's probably it may get a little weird i'm not sure exactly how that works but you may have to do it the first time to see how it brings it over what colors and then you set your layers up and as long as your colors are the same in corel every time then yes it, you would be able to replicate that with speed and power by using the color okay cool i think that'll make it easier for hubs to try to figure out which what would what's a cat and what's a in right right so and not yeah you you'll probably have to set it i don't you know but you have to choose between line and fill it, it won't it won't be able to interpret that kind of data i don't think um from there but yeah it will recognize the different colors and you can assign different speeds and powers and processes to each layer by color and it will continue to recognize those okay Brian, perfect brian do you know anyone who uses like illustrator as their like primary um, I've got it, but that's again I don't use it. Sure. Uh, there's a bunch of people that use Illustrator as well, and of course yeah. you know it'll natively accept those, so it's basically drag and drop. So, yeah, I'm. I, I guess I realized when Kaki asked that, like, uh, as I primarily primarily use Illustrator on yeah. my personal computer, and then when I go to the Makerspace Laser, I just export a vector PDF and print yeah. from that. Um, yeah, and, you can do the same thing. If you're used to working in it, you can design in anything you're used to. Yeah. And come right in. I, I, am, I am eager to see like how capable Lightburn is because it sounds like it's got a bunch of like design so or like vector design software features built right in. But mm -hmm. like, you know, it's it's hard to like change and change old habits and stuff. So like, I'm like, do I? I, I wonder like how much I'm gonna like stay in my current workflow and how much I'm gonna adapt and like just use the features that are already there so I don't I, I just follow along you know import your artwork and as you need to edit it in Lightburn if you need yeah. to or whatever you'll pick it up real quick yeah. you may find that Lightburn is uh, a little bit not not as much heavy lifting you know to do what you need to do um, you mean you haven't even opened Lightburn yet me no I, <laughs> I mean I I pick up software pretty quick millennial yeah. and whatnot but <laughs> um, I'm just giving you a hard time. No, yeah. that's cool. there's nothing wrong with being prepared, so don't listen to John. Or, or <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm, I like the, the, the hazing about it. It's fun <laughs> fun. I, you know, it, I, I'm, I told you the last time, like I'm, I'm pretty close to, to pulling the trigger now that I at least like have that solution and got the, the plywood wall starting to go up, but. Uh, when, yeah, I, when, I finally to, when I finally talked to sales, like I don't know how you guys is like their commission structure works. Commission structure works, but I almost feel like you've done the selling for me, Brian. Like so, it's like where's your where's your cut of the check? <laughs> I did I did the sales for the first year. You know when Clay yeah. got me, I was kind of like the second. He was he ran the whole thing by himself. You know, yeah. uh, and then and then I got into that, and it was fun. I like it. Um, but I'm more of a service guy, so it doesn't hurt yeah. my feelings that I don't have to deal with that stuff. Because I'm <laughs> sure that nobody thought that I was a traditional type kind of salesperson because I wouldn't call you back. If you want a laser, you know, you'll know yeah. that you want this laser and you're going to buy it. I don't have to bother yeah. you, you know. Sure. And I'm sure I wasn't a, a good salesperson as far as what a management company would think a salesperson would be well, yeah, they, but, they like the high pressure sales tactics and stuff like i i don't like that stuff though like i just like someone who really knows their their product they're passionate about it and they're like willing to educate you without like feeling like you're they're you're wasting their time and sure. that's kind of how you hold these you know these uh yeah tech well, webinars so. if i wasn't answering questions about lasers for thunder laser i'd be doing it you know on my own, so on the that's just and stuff. yeah, yeah, kind of weird. It's my hey, thing. Yes. Curious, what is your hold back? On, Mine? oh, on purchasing, yeah. What, oh. just 
No, it's it's just that I've been uh, turning my garage into a workshop, and it's still like kind of a war zone in there. So uh, I I, I'm notorious for buying things before I'm ready for them, and then like they're in my way. So I'm trying to get like the garage like completely tidy and organized and done before I have a 35 inch by you know 24 inch machine in there or whatever. So I can relate. I'm very close, I'm very close though. <laughs> cool. Well, all right, guys. This year and next year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's good. He's already cut a hole in his house. He has no choice right. now. <laughs> He's committed now. Yeah. yeah that, that was like the yeah, that was like the, the big step right there is like cutting a hole in the roof. So hey, if you will, it'll be there when you're ready. Yeah, exactly. Is it still like three weeks, Brian? Or it's no, a couple months, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm November and I heard it uh, September. September what? Mid September and I'm looking at almost the end of November delivery. And what size machine is it? 3500. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm probably going to get a 3580, so I should probably just order it now then if I want to do any Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. No. You might want to make some reservations at the makerspace. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> right, I I'm not, day. it won't Hopefully be the end of the world if it's not here by Christmas, but, but no, I'm, I'm getting a little tired of the makerspace laser. It's, it's, uh, it's near its end of life at this point. Like they, they've actually been talking about replacing it for a year or so now, but People just keep coming in, using it, and abusing it, and so it's not—it's not the same laser I started using four years ago. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's about ready to be put out of the pasture. They need a thunder. They I do. I was gonna say we would expect you talk you to talk them into a thunder, right? <laughs> you must. Well, <laughs> the the, ma the maker space is very uh, a very different thing these days with COVID, like like previously there'd be like you know 50 people in the maker space at one time and now you have to like make a reservation there can be only like five people in the woodworking area only one person in the laser room only one, you know and it's so it's it's i know like they're doing it for safety precautions and it's it's makes sense and whatnot but like it's just a very different culture there right now because like there's not the the community aspect that previously was there they may not be in the position to get another one right at the moment with all that going on either right right yeah so. For sure. All, All right. right. I just wanted to I'm mention that this thing off, unless you guys want to hang around a little bit, I better go into the question. I just want to yeah. say one thing to Ron. Ron, I talked about talking to the sales department. Yeah. I did all the research just like you did. And when I was ready to buy it, I've never spoken to anyone at Thunder Laser. Because you can buy this laser through email and not even have to bother with it. I've never spoken to Clay, Rebecca, <laughs> any of them. Once you make up your mind, you don't need to talk to a salesman or a sales lady. Yeah. Just send them your money. They'd be more than happy to take it. <laughs> you don't have to talk to anybody. Okay. <laughs> Jason, we're we're just about to leave. You came back like right as we're wrapping up. Perfect. Hey. I missed all the <laughs> Oh well. I got I got some fun stuff to deal with here. I just got me five more printers today. Oh, cool! Wrapping so, up production, huh? Yeah, gonna try to. I gotta get all them set up and get them started printing. Oh, it's the fifteenth. I need to get with you about some pieces, parts, just to have hanging around. An extra this or that. Not not, yeah. not anything. Remember what we were talking about? I'll get with you on that tomorrow. Yeah, but like I said, I, I want to get these up and running and, and actually get a stockpile of stuff yeah. uh, built up. Cool. But All right. And, uh, also, also, I don't know if you want to put out to your people, anybody that has the, the older, older acrylic ones. Um, I'm got a template and the new block that I'm, I'm getting ready to print up and get get made just in case anybody wants to, to make that mod or okay. change to the to the mount yeah I'm, i made a ticket on you know a, a article on that but i don't have any specifics on where the hole goes i just said approximately here <laughs> well you saw it 
Yeah, so, well, I, I, mean, I, I printed out there. I have a printed template to where they lay it over it, and then they just drill the hole there, and then they take it off and put the bracket on it, and they're done. Sweet. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind at some point, you don't have to do it today. Shoot that to me if you'd like me to, and I'll put it on that article so they can find it there, too. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean if people want to make the mod, which I'm sure some people will, um, but uh, it'll be a lot, a lot easier keeping everything straight and yeah keep it all uniform so yeah okay well sweet well i guess i'm gonna kill this thing and uh i'll put this recording up after it gets done